Hi guys, today's video is going to be about things I didn't know about law school until I got there. And I think this video is mainly for people who are thinking about going to law school or maybe people who have gotten into law school, congratulations, but who don't really know what to expect. I think when I got accepted into law school four years ago, holy crap, I went in almost blind. I didn't really like do a lot of research into like the culture or what to expect. And I didn't personally have many seniors from law school who I could like reach out to and ask. I think it would have been really good if I just went in with a clear idea of what to expect and that would have I think helped me a lot more emotionally. So before the video starts, of course, you know, you have to put out some disclaimers. This whole video is really based on my personal experience and the experiences of my peers and also taking into account the fact that I graduated from SMU, uh, Singapore Management University School of Law, Yongbang House School of Law, sorry they just changed the name. So a lot of my experiences are going to be very SMU based but I'm pretty sure there are aspects of it that can be applied to NUS or SUSS if you do end up going there. So first off, I want to start off with the beginning of your law school journey which will obviously be admissions. So I went for both the SMU and NUS admissions exercise and I mean you can tell which one I got accepted into and which one rejected me. <laughs> It's fine, I'm okay. <laughs> so I only went for the SMU and NUS uh, admissions test, but of course they will look at your A-level grade or your poly GPA. So you can look at the IGPA, the indicative grade profiles, maybe I'll like put it somewhere here, but I think mostly they kind of expect straight A's or like almost a perfect a-level score but the thing is I knew people who didn't get like perfect A-level scores who still were able to go for the interview and the written test so if your grades aren't like perfect I don't think you should like not apply altogether I think you can give it a shot I feel like I know some people who had like B's and they still got in so it's all good there's also a written test you know a big part of law school is like writing and expressing yourself on paper so there's a written test, you also submit a written statement like about yourself, why you want to do law, blah 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 and you submit that with your general online application to the universities and then the scary part to me is really the interview so when I went to the NUS interview, I remember it was like two professors to a student so that I mean already is like a lot more intimidating for SMU, it will be I think two professors to around three students so I think SMU is really big on like group work and group dynamic which is great I think it really builds character but uh, I guess they kind of incorporated that into their interview process because you basically have to be impressive but you can't like be a complete ass to the other two people and you can't be so passive and so quiet that you don't share your opinions during the interview but basically they will ask you stuff that is kind of related to law but not necessarily substantive laws they just want to test your logical reasoning whether you are able to rationalize your thought so during the interview like just stay calm and just try to speak clearly and don't like ramble I would also like to say that for the sake of this video, everything is going to be quite general and I'm sorry I can't really delve into like a lot of specific tips and tricks for example like how to ace your admissions interview but I found this amazing reddit post from a guy who was from NUS Law and he really writes about his experience in detail and I think that will help you a lot. I will link it in the description. So now I'm going to be moving on to the general curriculum structure and the general core structure of SMU and a little bit about NUS. So in SMU, you know, we are famous for having seminar style classes. So basically 
most if not all classes are seminar based which means that you are basically in a seminar room with around like 30 40 people talking to the professor so it's kind of like a secondary school or jc classroom experience where the professor is more likely than not going to know you and you're going to have to do your class participation and it, it's a lot more intimate you know in terms of like the learning experience uh, in NUS based on the reddit post that was so useful the NUS guy said that the lessons will either be a seminar tutorial or cohort based lecture so 50% of the classes are seminars and tutorials and then the other 50% are like cohort based lectures which I would assume is like the whole cohort in a lecture hall listening to the professor talk. So the tutorials and lectures are two hours while the seminars are three hours. So actually it is kind of similar to SMU in that respect. So naturally because of that, a lot of SMU law students will try their best. I think most of us will try our best to make it for classes. If we miss it, we will have to definitely provide MC and we will try to arrange a makeup class. From what I hear from some of my NUS friends, like people straight up like skip lectures uh, and they just like watch the recorded lecture in their own time. And I think that can be quite good if you are good at managing your own time and maybe you learn better like watching the lecture back at home. But definitely for seminars, it means that you have to be more prepared for classes because there is the chance that the professor will call you out for class participation and if you haven't read, it's going to be quite obvious that you didn't do your readings. But if you're just in there for a lecture, I don't think the professors will like call you out. I'm not sure. So something I wish I knew about SMU before I came to SMU is the fact that they really stress like a holistic education so like if you are someone who is coming to law school and you exclusively just want to do law i feel like you should definitely try to go to nus instead because in smu we have other like core modules or like smu modules that you have to take that are more general and not substantively law related so during my batch we were forced to take finance for law and financial accounting for law and some people really did very well at that but it definitely tanked the GPAs of many people as well which is so unfortunate because it is counted as part of your final GPA so this is definitely something to take note of but if you're like me and you kind of like being a generalist and you know you get sick of uh, law subjects here and there I think having the general modules is quite fun uh, aside from finance like I was able to take introduction to political science international relations in East Asia and all of that which I found very fun and very interesting and it's nice to like take a break from the law modules and for me personally I love taking those modules and using those modules to like pull up my overall GPA. So something I didn't really know about law school was that the way the curriculum works is going to be very different from other faculties in whatever university you're from. A big part of our curriculum is made up of core modules that everyone is required to take. Whereas for other schools, I find like for business and soci, there are some modules that everyone is forced to take but after that, you can choose like what major you want to specialize in. If you're in business, maybe you can choose to go into finance modules and go more into marketing modules. But for law school, like the majority of our required courses are going to be mandatory across the cohort. So some of the core modules include things like contract law, business law, company law, property, legal research and writing. And that was like the majority of the courses we took in the first four semesters of university. But even in year three and year four, we took some of the more like complex core modules like conflicts and equity, which was really crazy. But other than that, we are able to take electives in year three and year four. And I think then is when I think people start adjusting better to law school because you start being able to take up courses that you're actually interested in. There is usually like quite a decent range of electives for you to choose from. If you have something you specifically want to take, I would suggest you do some research into the law schools in Singapore and what they offer. Because for example, if you're interested in environmental law, I don't think SMU has that elective. Maybe I'm wrong, but in my batch, there was no environmental law. 
but they have it in NUS. In year 3 and 4, you also have the option to do international moots. Moots are basically like in layman terms, just like a law-based competition where you make written submissions and oral submissions and mooting is quite like a big part of SMU law culture. It's not for everybody but you'll have the option to try out for it and do the competitions in year 3 and 4. So another big part of the curriculum is the fact that you would be required to do internships. In NUS, based on the reddit thread um the guy said that internships are all up to students and like whether they want to take it and it makes a lot of sense to take up legal internships because it's a way for you to get some hands-on experience you know see whether legal practice is for you because it can be very different from like studying law it's also a way for you to springboard into a training contract in the future so for law students in order to get qualified aka get called to the bar and be an actual lawyer in Singapore, you not only have to finish your four years of law school, whether it's the LLB program or the JD program, after you finish that, you have to take your Part B examinations and you have to do a six-month training contract. So the six-month training requirement for my batch and the year below me has now been changed to one year of training for any batches in 2023 onwards that take the bar examination. So please take note, if you do an internship, it might be a way for you to get the training contract and it will help you on your journey to get qualified. In SMU, internships are required. There is a 10-week minimum uh, requirement for internships and I think you can do it across maximum of like three firms. So you can do like four weeks, four weeks, two weeks. And generally legal internships are quite short. I know like in business school, internships can last for like three months or like six months. But in the law industry, they last for quite a short time, maybe like two to four weeks. Basically, you will have to apply for the internships on your own. Like SMU and NUS will not like give out internship slots for you and make sure that you have an internship. You gotta go get that coin on your own. And when I say coin, I am speaking figuratively because some of these internships don't pay at all. Uh, some of the bigger firms do. And most students will start doing their internships in year two onwards. So in SMU, we have the 10 week requirement. So most students want to get that like over and done with. So they tend to pack their internships in year two. But I mean, there are people who do internships all the way up to the end of law school in year four. So it really is up to you. You just need to get the 10 weeks in order to graduate. I also wanted to point out the fact that uh, when you're in law school and if you are intending to practice, you are going to feel like there is a very strict timeline that you have to adhere to. I think when you're from other faculties, once you graduate, you would naturally like look for a job or if you're lucky, you're able to secure employment before you graduate. But in law school, I think the process starts way earlier than that. Most people will want to like do their internships in year two, secure a training contract by year three. And then in year four, once they graduate, they will start doing their bar exam, which will take six months, and then they will start training. So this essentially means that people are securing uh, training contracts almost like two to three years in advance, which actually sounds so crazy to people who are not from law school because it's like this isn't even full-time employment. This is literally just a training position. And I think because of that, it definitely puts a lot of pressure on law students. And my advice for you is to know what you want and what you don't want. If you are someone who wants to work for a big four firm or an international firm, many of these timelines are going to be very strict and important for you to follow. So if you need to secure that training contract for a big four firm in year three, just send out your applications early and hope for the best. But if you are someone who wants to work in a small to medium-sized firm, I encourage you to still send out your applications early because uh, at the end of the day, training positions might be given out on a rolling basis. So like the earlier you apply, uh, you might have a higher chance of getting a traineeship. It might be the case that the firm that you want may only open up a position for you a year down the line. So just keep trying, just keep applying. But if you are like in year four and for whatever reason you are unable to secure your training contract, uh, please don't panic. Please don't compare yourself 
to others because everyone is sorting their own shit out and in the end everything will be okay i can say with quite a bit of confidence that there will be enough training contracts to go around for your whole cohort it's just about managing your expectations we have like an smu law telegram chat with like a bunch of different batches of smu law people and even up to like a month before your training period is supposed to start there are law firms still looking for trainees on that note i think it would be quite interesting to talk a bit about law school culture so I think most people have this impression of law school being very toxic and very competitive. I think from my experience, I'm quite lucky because my batch overall, I would say, was pretty okay. I've met a lot of like lovely supportive friends from law school and I see so many like loving and supportive people in law school but I think by nature of the course people can be quite competitive when you look at like the people who are coming into law school I was from a very average JC and coming into law school I was suddenly surrounded by so many people who are from like elite elite junior colleges and these are people who are like extremely intelligent very driven, very academically successful their entire lives and they come here and they know what they want and they really can hustle and on the other hand there are many students who like come from schools that are like average or even like below average JCs and then they come into law school and they completely dominate. I came from an average school and then I ended up being like an average law student. <laughs> I feel like I definitely struggled compared to my peers. I struggled like intellectually and emotionally trying to keep up with everyone. I always felt like a very acute imposter syndrome, especially in year one and year two. I remember just going into class and feeling absolutely idiotic and I just felt like I didn't know what I was doing. I felt like everyone was so confident and like had their shit together and I was the only one kind of like drowning. People are quite competitive so because of that like things like your GPA, your grades, very like obvious indicators of academic success can really affect your self-perception in law school. It is quite like a bubble and you kind of get a little bit obsessed. The last thing I want to say is going to be very cliche but comparison is the thief of joy. I think I would have saved myself a lot of like sadness and heartache if I didn't compare myself with people around me. And I think the sad part is not even that you compare yourself to like this person who is like this mean, bitchy, high achieving, law school nemesis. It's like sometimes you just compare yourself to your friends or like people who are close to you and you just feel so inadequate. Even things like talking about grades can sometimes be so sensitive. If you are like a sensitive person and if you don't want to subject yourself to that kind of like negative toxic headspace, it's okay to actively choose not to talk about law school with some of your law school friends. That's the end of the video. Oh my gosh, I feel so tired. I'm so sorry if it was like really rambly, but I hope that parts of it were useful. If you are going into law school or if you're thinking about going to law school, I wish you all the best. You can leave a comment or question in the comment section or you can like and subscribe, you know, and I will see you another time. Bye!